Hey buddies, Potato McWhiskey here, and welcome to Let's Play Hearts of Iron 4. Now, something, uh, quite a bit of feedback I got from you guys is that you enjoyed the theme of the game and you thought it was really interesting, but you didn't really understand what was going on in the game, and I didn't really make much effort to explain myself as I played. And that's definitely a big mistake of mine, so we're going to try to correct that um, this time. Um, we're going to be playing as France because we're going to get into war relatively early, but it will mean that we can talk a little bit about some of the decisions and that choices that we're going to make as France. Um, and I'm going to try to go a lot slower where I spend a little bit more time talking about why I'm doing certain things, what the decisions I'm making are, and you know the, the, the ins and outs of the whys and the whats and the whos and the wheres, etc. So we are going to be playing as France. Now France is a colonial empire. We have uh, a lot of provinces all around the world, which gives us some unique abilities to fight the war. For example, we could potentially be at war with Japan at some point over here. Now, we can potentially release nations if we want to use their manpower. We'll talk a little bit about that, but for now, Let's just do the basic things. So when you first start up a game of Hearts of Iron, the very first thing you're probably going to want to do is select a national focus. And there's quite a few different focuses that you can choose. For example, if you're playing as France, I'll spend a little bit of time just looking through them and talking about it. So here is Metropolitan France. Basically, what this will do is we'll add infrastructure to multiple areas in France. So if I go to my construction menu and then select the infrastructure, uh, you can see that... The, where's the mid Pyrenees? I think it adds stuff down to here. Uh, let me see if I can. Midi Pyrenees, Rhones, and Alps. So that will add a decent amount of infrastructure to here, here, and here. And these are these are quite good provinces, particularly these ones because these have resources in them. And when you increase the infrastructure in a place that has resources, it increases the amount of resources you get from that place. So that's quite good. So that's what that natural national focus would do. Then we have industrial expansion. This will add a bunch of civilian factories to our lands. Now, civilian factories are what you use. They're like a, a kind of industrial currency. Um, civilian factories can be used to produce things such as anti-air, air bases, radar stations, infrastructure, military factories, which you use to produce uh, weapons and equipment for your infantry and your other units. You could also produce more civilian factories so that you can uh, produce more buildings, naval dockyards, synthetic refineries, nuclear reactors, rocket sites, and all the basic sort of, you know, forts and ports and all that cool stuff. Uh, but your civilian factories can also be used to trade for resources. So if I have a deficit, deficit of oil, I can go look in this list for somebody who has oil and tell them, hey, I will give you one civilian factory for eight oil and then once I trade, make that trade, and I wait like an hour, see if I can, I wait an hour, and then I go up to my construction menu, and you can see that I'm trading away uh, one of my civilian factories to the United States for some oil, and then that means that I have one less civilian factory to use on things like this. So if I cancel that now, and I go back, that goes up to seven. So hopefully that kind of explains civilian factories. The other thing that they need to be spent on is consumer goods. Consumer goods are basically a measure of how much of your economy is dedicated to making sure people have, you know, clothing, uh, cars, re like stuff your population needs to survive. Uh, so that's what these sort of ones... <clears throat> that's what these focuses do they get you more civilian factories and more military factories and then eventually another research slot they also have the some nuclear stuff and jet effort and you can get another research slot down here but we won't worry about that um we could also go for a defensive focus or an aggressive focus uh, we can do government reform we can do a navy focus or an air focus and then there's some continuous focuses so generally speaking this one um We'll kind of talk about the position that France is in and about the decisions that I'm going to make. So France has the uh, the national spirits here. The first one is Victors of the Great War. Uh, so basically, this is to simulate 
that we won the First World War and our people are kind of, there's a sort of contentedness to the army, right? They don't, they don't, they don't see a reason to advance because we won and, and we've got the Maginot line. We don't need to do anything. Um, and then they also have a disjointed government, which means that we lose a lot of our political power, which is like your primary currency in the game. So we're going to have trouble doing anything with political power. We also lose stability, which means we have less benefits from having a high stability. And it also means that we surrender easier just because our, 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 our current government is very unstable. So we could do a few things about that. For example... Um, now, we could do go with Britain. Uh, so we have quite a few choices. What we want to do is we want to get rid of all of these. Well, the protected by the Maginot is less important, but we definitely want to get rid of the victors of the Great War and the disjointed government because these are just purely negative. So in order to get rid of the victors of the Great War, I need to get down to army reform. Now, if I go for the aggressive focus... Um, this would allow me to get motor uh, let's have a look right so the defensive focus will give me army defense uh, I'm trying to pick how I want to go in terms of of things i don't think i think we're going to go democratic democratic as um as france here i could go for a communism type thing and um, this could if i went down the sort of democratic thing i could definitely maybe go for a um an early attack on the what do you call it Not an early attack. I could send volunteers to Spain, basically. But I think we're going to go down with the status quo. And I think the very first thing we're going to want to get rid of is this disjointed government thing. So we're going to go down government reform, support the status quo, go with Britain, strengthen the government, and then defensive stratagems. So we're going we're gonna to come down this way. We want to get rid of this as soon as possible because it gives us a huge penalty to our political power gain. So let's go ahead and take the government reform. And another big advantage is this is going to give us a big boost of our political power, which we will almost certainly be spending on um, improving the worker conditions. Interesting. So now we have uh, some choices in terms of technology. Now, generally speaking, the best things to start with are electromechanical engineering, because what it does is um, it gives you 2% off all future researches. And the thing about research bonuses in this game is they stack really well together. Um, that's 2%. So all three of these will get a 2% bonus. So this is you know worth spending 100 days to get. Um, th this essentially gives me an extra... Um, an extra 18 days of research every year. Well, it's probably more like 25 days of research a year, just this one tech. So after four years, it's essentially paid itself off. But don't forget, it also means that I get to start researching a new tech quicker, which is also finished quicker. So it's, it's a little bit better than that. It's probably more on, you know, it has a snowballing effect to get this. Um, then the construction is just always really good because you're always going to be building things. So you want to have a high construction repair speed and a factory repair speed. So we're going to grab construction. Now, normally what you want to do is also start researching a doctrine. But because we're France and we have the victors of the Great War um, negative thing, we have a 75% penalty to researching land doctrine. So we're not going to do that. Instead, we're going to look for maybe some other stuff that we can research that will help us more. Uh, some examples of those things. I could get some fighters. Uh, let's see here. I could also research basic machine tools, which will give us more production efficiency, which means that any of the things that we produce have a higher cap. So right now the current cap is a 50% production efficiency. That means uh, the base production output of a factory is five production per day. 
these cost um well i'll start a new line just to show you so if we check out this this line this line has an efficiency of 10 percent, right so that means of the five output that is multiplied by 10%, so we have a 5.5 output, that gets multiplied by 10.01, which means we have about uh, a 0 0.55 output per day, which means these cost 0 0.5, so we're producing 1.1 a day. And every day that goes by, our factory line gets more and more efficient. So production efficiency is really, really important for you to be able to get uh, more output from your industrial production. So that's going to be really important. We are going to be definitely um, not doing this, but doing this. Uh, I don't think we're going to be producing any light tanks. I don't think we're going to be producing any motorized. I don't think we're going to be producing any towed artillery or any support equipment. Well, I guess we could probably produce support equipment. That's probably fine. We'll put one factory on support equipment, and then we'll put two factories on close air support now these submarines we're going to just do one and we're going to assign all of our naval factories in sequence and we're going to just finish okay that's kind of annoying i don't like that that's doing that just make one of each of these and uh finish those okay this is naval production is a bit of a weird thing that i'm not going to bother explaining but we'll be producing some close air support to support our army and we have i like a ratio of three infantry equipment factories to one uh, support equipment factory i find that that ratio works out pretty well uh so we've handled a few different things let's handle our construction now currently we have the uh, civilian economy government uh we, we have this as our economy law which means it's very slow for us to build any sort of factory at the moment so what i like to do in the early game when we have this law that there is no penalty to building infrastructure so i like to spend a little bit of time looking around where there's a lot of resources and maybe seeing if i could get a little bit of resources i also tend to look around in places that are going to be safer in case i get in invaded for example, over here in Normandy and Loire and, Norm uh, and stuff like that, that tends to be a lot safer to build factories in because it's away from the front lines uh, with Spain, with Italy and with Germany. So I, f I find it's just a little bit safer to, uh, to maybe build stuff over here. So let's have a look. We'll spend a little bit of time. Uh, there's two slots available there. Well, let's build down here in Aquitaine. We'll get a little bit of extra resources. And then we will build over here in Poitou as well. And the reason we're building infrastructure is because there's no penalty to building infrastructure. If we were to build uh, a civilian factory right now, you can see here, it would take 113 days with a full production line because we have that minus 30% from uh, having civilian economy. But if we build a piece of infrastructure, for example, this will provide us with a production bonus to building a civilian factory. You can see here in Poitou, uh, it says down here uh, near the bottom, state infrastructure 1.6. That's because there's six infrastructure in Poitou. So if we build this up to 10, that will give us a 40% production boost to building civilian infrastructure there. So that's why we want to build up infrastructure first, because that will give us a boost to building uh, factories later. Um, I will actually build three civilian factories in Poitou when it's finished, and then another four in Aquitaine when that one's finished. I like building uh, at least a decent chunk of civilian factories in the early game because I find that tends to be like a currency that keeps on paying itself off. Now, we have a few other things to do. We are producing some outdated equipment according to this, but that's not a big deal. We also have an army that we need to assign. And boy, oh boy, that's a lot of troops. We also have a North African army. We'll create a new theater for that. Uh, let's see. We have an army over here in uh, sort of Syria, Lebanon, etc. So we'll create an army for that. And then we have another army down here in Madagascar. That'll be another army. And then we have an army in Africa. 
you guys all join together and then we have an army out here in the east so we see are there any important resources in here there's a lot of rubber in here so i think i might have to keep this for myself i just want to look around is there any places i could release um madagascar an option now i could return territory to people I could release Laos. Hmm. I could release Cambodia. That doesn't have any, um... That, Cambodia doesn't have any resources and neither does Laos, so I could release both of them and use their manpower to help me fight my wars. So I think that's probably a good idea. Yeah, I like that idea. So let's go ahead and go into here. And I'll kind of explain a little bit. So we're going to release the Republic of Laos. And the Republic of Cambodia, but not Vietnam. Now the reason we're doing this is because if you go into here, these guys have their own manpower, right? And as their overlord, if you check here, manage my subjects, um... I am their puppet master, which means they need to give me 90% of their manpower if I build divisions for them. Uh, and not only that, but an advantage to releasing these guys is they will do their own national focuses and they could build up these regions to have extra factories. And, you know, they'll provide me with some benefits just by having them in my alliance because I could potentially get tech bonuses off having these guys with me. Um, and they don't have any particular resources, so they might, and because they're going to be looking for resources, they might trade with me first before they trade with anybody else. So I think there's, you know, there's something to be said for that. Uh, but what we're going to do is we're going to talk to these guys and create new divisions. Um, we're going to copy the uh, Cambodian Infantry Division, and we will call this... Cambodian infantry, just to make it easier to remember. And this is just means that we can train troops in Cambodia, right? Wait, what? That's weird. But anyway, we, we can train troops in Cambodia uh, using 90% of their manpower. We only have to give 10% of the manpower. So what that means is we can effectively um, have extra manpower that uses our colonial sort of nation's manpower. So we're going to do the same thing for La uh, Laos as well. Let's go ahead and talk to the Republic of Laos, and we will just make a... Well, I guess I could make a colonial division, but I'm just going to copy this one as well, and we will edit this and call it... Call it just Laos Infantry. We'll rename it. We're going to train a couple of those. Uh, I need to wait a day before I train those. But what we can do is potentially swap these guys over to use other people's manpower, just so I don't have to fill the, these manpower. And then these colonial troops are more or less um, part of the sort of... I don't, I don't have to worry about this, right? Because I'm using their manpower. Um, let's see. So we have no divisions in basic training. I'm going to leave that the way it is for now. Um, I am buying oil. I don't think I need any more oil. I'm going to leave this the way it is and we will go ahead and get started and let time run because that's pretty much all the stuff you have to handle. You just have to do a little bit of handling before the game gets started and we'll let things kind of just run along for a while. I haven't given these guys any orders or anything yet, but we will we will go through and give them a little bit of orders when the time comes and it starts to matter. Wait a minute. I thought I was buying oil. Ah, I for, I actually cancelled the oil trade. Right. Let's do that now. And what that should do is make sure that we are getting the oil we need for our planes, which means we produce them a little bit quicker. And you can see every day that goes by, the amount of planes that we're producing goes up. So it's 2.1, 2. So it's going up very, very slowly as it builds up to this cap of 50%. And once we research 
um, basic machine tools, that cap will be 60%. So, th so this, theoretically, this research, when finished and a production line is fully geared, um, we will get a bonus, of, uh, basically a 20% bonus to production over our current potential maximum, um, which is quite nice, I have to say. See, already we're starting to finish some of this infrastructure, which will soon be filtering down into some of these civilian factories as well. And you can see now, now that we've finished one of the infrastructure, you can see the state infrastructure multiplier has gone up to 1.7, which is quite nice. Okay, we are missing production of artillery and light tanks. Uh, let's, let's have a little bit of an organization of our army. Right. So we're going to create a new theater. We're going to call this the, um, Asian the theater. We'll put it on low priority. Um, I probably should have used colonial troops, but it's fine. So we're going to set... Yeah, these guys have 70k manpower, these guys have 17k. So what we're going to do is we're going to try to make sure that we're using up that manpower. And we can actually even check these guys are doing naval effort, these guys are doing political effort. So we're going to go in here and actually we're going to convert all of these guys to um, Cambodian infantry. I should have made these colonial divisions. Oh, is it too late to do that? Because that means I only have to spend infantry equipment on them, and that's a lot cheaper than spending anything else. Yeah, I'm going to make those. I'm going to call these Cambodian Cologne. Because I really just want to use up their manpower for now. I don't want to have to actually improve those units. And we will make, for Laos as well, we'll copy that division. And we'll call this Laos. Did I spell that wrong? Colonials. Okay. And we're going to convert all of these guys over to Laos. And what that will mean, that should free up some of my manpower. Not Laos infantry, sorry. Laos colonials. And you can see we're going to gain a bunch of manpower and towed artillery from swapping these go guys over to be colonial troops. Now, colonial troops are a lot worse, but that's okay. And you can see in here, if we let a day tick, we have used up a certain percentage of their manpower, which is quite nice because we, we, that's what we want to do. So we are going to train some... Laos Colonials. I think I'll do 12. 12 at a time. Seems reasonable. Since they don't have a huge amount of population, I'll we'll just deploy them in Laos. We are going to set up an order here for a garrison order to protect all this territory. And then we're going to assign these guys to that order and we can make use of this. Basically what we're doing is we just want these troops in the field um, and under my control so that I can reassign them to uh, to divisions that matter to me later. So you can see now they have zero manpower and we want to do the same thing with um, Cambodia. So we're going to go in here and we're going to train some Cambodian colonials. I think we'll go up to 24 for them. I think that seems like a good number. How many is that? It took up most of their manpower. We'll go up to 30 then. We'll deploy those in Cambodia and set them to this order as well. And the main, the main purpose of this is just to be a reserve of manpower that we can call upon later. It is going to mean that we have a big deficit of guns. But again, remember, we can just disband these troops um, to get those guns back to use elsewhere. But really what we're trying to do is just, just reserve this manpower because we don't, we don't have a huge amount ourselves. We just gained 100k manpower roughly from releasing these two nations and they're going to be doing their own stuff like building naval factories and all that sort of stuff so they'll be able to contribute to the war in a number of ways. Uh, we'll leave that the way it is. Okay, so we have reserved their manpower. Uh, we dealt with that. Let's have a look down here in Africa. I think this guy could actually join the African theater. This is like North Africa, which is a, should be its own unique theater. 
this is its own unique theater but this guy you can for sure join these guys because Madagascar is very unlikely to get invaded and far more likely these colonial troops I'm trying to think who is going to be who is likely going to be our enemy and where do we want to be positioned well for now I'll leave you guys the way you are and we're going to call this the uh, Sub-Saharan Theatre. And this is just a way to divide up our troops into groups so that we know exactly where they are. So this is my Asian theatre, so I know all the troops are over here. And we're going to make another theatre over here with these guys. This is going to be the um, Western Asia or Middle East uh, some people call it. And we're going to make sure that these theaters are set to be low priority. So that if they're missing any reinforcements or gear or anything like that, they're not going to be, they're not going to get first pickings because these aren't important theaters. But North Africa and France are important theaters. So we've got some colonial divisions here. Let's swap all of these guys over to colonial divisions. This will um, cost us a little bit of manpower. These are very small horses, but they should refund us some support equipment. And we're going to just set up a garrison order in this area. That'll be fine. That'll keep them busy. And do we have a desert fox to assign to this army? Let's have a look. Well, actually, you know what I could do? I could turn these into cavalry. Cavalry tends to fight pretty well in a desert anyway. And then I could use this cavalry officer. Because then he could uh, get the cavalry leader um, and cavalry expert. So yeah, I think we'll have these guys just be cavalry in North Africa. I think they tend to work a little bit better in deserts than infantry. Um, although these are quite weak divisions, so they won't be able to do a huge amount, but they will be useful there. M more, more importantly, they're cheap. Um, we are going to be having a look at these tank divisions. Right. Uh, we need to change this. We are going to be getting rid of these tank divisions because we would much rather have these kind of tank divisions. These are far better. And just to show you why, I'll compare the stats. So you can see here, in terms of production cost, this division here costs a hell of a lot. I'm trying to see, is there a way to see the production cost? No, I think I'd have to go into here. So if we compare the... This one, you can see this is 1,680 to 2,000 production cost compared to the 1,500. And if you compare the stats, this division here, down here, is cheaper, right? This division is cheaper, has better breakthrough, has better defense, has better soft attack, has better hard attack. Everything about this division down here is better um, when you compare it to these two. When you compare these two divisions, everything about this division with a little bit of motorized, is better. Now, to be fair, it is about 50% bigger too, but it's more cost effective. So at the very least, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be grabbing these um, crappy four guys and switching them over to the other kind of um, tank divisions. And that will refund us some light tanks, which is always nice. So we have a reserve of light tanks. We're not, we're not pushed for anything like that. Um, I'm going to assign this cavalry to North Africa as well, just to get it out of the out of the theater. We don't we don't need it there. Uh, where are my mountain troops? Okay, we're gonna grab mountain troops and put them on the border with Italy because we're gonna make a new army. We're gonna assign them to this border because this is mostly mountainous terrain, and the mountain troops will fight better there. And um, we will probably assign a little bit of infantry to there as well. Ideally, I would like to get to seven i'd like to get to like a full 24 division uh up here so i might just do that i'll grab the how many more i need quite a few more so let's grab i think we'll just go to 20 for now so one more so 20 divisions defending this border can i convert some of you guys to mountains 
Can I convert one of you to mountains? No. How big are our mountain, mountain divisions? Our mountain divisions are currently 24 combat width. That's a little bit too big. We definitely want to change that. Um, we want it to be more... Um, I like my mountain troops to be 16 width because I feel like that lets me have more of them. So that's something we're going to be we're going to be editing. Um, we'll talk about combat width and stuff like that later. And then the rest of these guys, you know, I'll just put them on the border with Germany. Uh, just for now. And they will be... Oh, I have some colonial divisions, actually. Why don't you become cavalry as well? And then go join the North African guys. And then we have a nice solid 24 divisions over here. We have a bunch of cavalry over here, and the cavalry should do the trick of being a high speed. So, the remilitarization of the Rhineland has happened. That basically means Germany has gone through and clicked on this. So, we have an option of a, a several responses. We can immediately start a war against Germany. However, it would mean that we would lose political power and stability and we would suffer a civil war. So we're just going to do a diplomatic objection. Okay, we're going to say, hey, look, we don't appreciate what you're doing. We're going to go ahead and support the status quo. This is going to give us stability, but it's also going to get us closer to strengthening our government and getting rid of that disjointed government debuff, which is hurting our political power gain right now. We're making 0 0.2 political power a day, which is really not quite good enough. And as you can see, Germany has a lot more factories than us. Now, we have an awful lot of civilian factories, which are going to be very useful. But, um, yeah, they have better laws too, so we have to try and make do and improve. So one of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to improve worker conditions. This is going to cost us some civilian factories for about 180 days, but it will give us a lot of stability, which in the long run will increase the output we have, how much political power we gain. And right now we don't gain a lot of political power. So if we can increase our political power by any amount, that's a significant boost to our income. You can see already um, we're getting 0 0.2 political power from stability. So we just finished the first research, which will lower our research uh, time. And then we're going to go ahead and grab mechanical computing because this will stack um, additively which I, th I think that's the right word. So every every little bit of research time that you get makes all your other research time more valuable. So if we can get our research time down another 3%, that's actually quite a nice boost. Um, basically, it'll make a it'll make a 100-day tech go down to uh, 75 days, and that means you can actually research a lot more. It, it gets better and better, because if you get... Um, let's say you already have a 2% increase to your research time. So then a tech will take 92, 98 days. If you get another 3%, it's not 3% of the 98. It's it's 3% of the base 100. So it, it takes it all the way down to 95 days, which is actually quite a large, larger. It's a larger percentage than 3%. So they stack quite well getting. That's why research time is really important to get early. And that's why um, when it comes to your export law, free trade is really, really good because it gives you a 10% research time uh, bonus. Although it does really hurt the amount of resources that you'll have available to your economy, which we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit uh, when the time comes. Okay. So my people have demanded early mobilization as our law. Now, we could lower our stability, or we could change our law to early mobilization. Now, the advantage of going to early mobilization is that 5% of our consumer goods will be available to us, and we will lose some of the penalties that we have for um, building factories. So I'm going to say the people have a right to feel safe, and we'll gain that war support. And then if I go in here, now if I open this up again, we're currently on early mobilization. Um... Now, if we go down into here, you can see we're only using 34% of our factories, whereas before we were using 39%. So we have a few extra factories available. 
two extra, in fact. And uh, we are also currently improving our stability, which means eventually that should lower the amount of consumer goods we're, we're using up. And you can see we have increased our stability to a point where we're actually getting more political power. And it's a significant amount, too, because remember, we don't have a lot of political power. Okay, so we've done support the status quo. We are going to go ahead and do go with Britain. We want that political power. So we finished basic machine tools. Now we could do the next machine tools tech, but it's a it's ahead of time, which basically means that the tech is not we're, we're researching this technology before its time in the real world. This technology comes available in 1937. We can try to research it and we can get it, um, but it's more expensive. Currently, we would pay a 122% uh, increase in cost, which is then multiplied by our um, it is multiplied by our research time reductions and it also decreases over time so we would research this a little bit ahead of time so the base cost is 150 days it would take us 217 days so i don't think this is worth it in terms of research time um so we have some good choices to make here we have to make a choice on how we want to structure our industry. Do we want to go with concentrated industry, which gives us a higher factory output? Or do we want to go with dispersed industry, which doesn't quite have the same level of factory output, but it has some benefits of having a better production efficiency, retention and base. And also lets you convert equipment a little bit quicker and your factories are less vulnerable to bombing. So I, I kind of like dispersed industry. Concentrated industry is really, really good. Um, for just raw productivity, it's really, really good for that. But I find dispersed industry gives you these nice benefits that I find are almost always very useful. Uh, let's have a look. Are we trading anything away? We are currently trading steel to some people. We're currently trading rubber to some people. And we're currently... That's about it. Following the sacking of two workers at a large factory, Struggan struggles, so we can say... Now, we could do, we could negotiate a deal. We could negotiate a deal which will hurt our factory output for a year and increase the popularity of the communists or we can say, go ahead and strike and just suffer a big uh, penalty for 90 days. I think I'm going to suffer the big penalty for 90 days. Um, I think I prefer that. And you can see here, we're currently constructing civilian factories. Let's make sure we're doing it like this. So that we're putting our full productivity into this. And now you can see... We're taking less of a penalty, so I don't feel so bad about um, about producing these now because they're only going to take about 60 days. Whereas if I, if I showed you, like, this one still takes 80 days, whereas each of these is taking roughly 70-ish days or something like that. I can't remember exactly how much it is. So it's quite a little bit faster from the 113 days that we were we were looking at the start. So I think that infrastructure was definitely worth building. So that productivity negative is really hurting how much we're producing. We're making like five planes a year due to the massive strikes. We will not be demobilizing. All right. And we just finished construction. Uh, resource gain efficiency is quite nice as France, but one of the things we want to make sure we're not falling behind on is we're going to need our infantry to be in as good shape as they can be and our artillery. So we're going to make sure we're focusing on infantry and artillery researches, even early into the game when it's not really relevant. They are going to be very, very important for us to survive the uh, German attack. So France and Britain have been announcing an alliance. We are going to go ahead and do strengthen the government. That will give us even more stability. Now, 
there is going to be um, some bad news. Let's go ahead and talk to you guys. Can we send volunteers or anything? No, we can't do anything because the world tension is too low. So we are going to suffer some penalties if we don't demobilize our economy, but we're going to leave these things the way they are. We just can't afford to... Um, can't afford to change our stance on that. This should go away. On the 25th of August, which is only like two days away. So we're no longer suffering there. And then the ease up conscription thing goes away once we have the war support to maintain those. Improved working conditions is almost done. And now we have a um, decent amount of stability, which is giving us that little bit extra political power. We almost have... Okay, so strikes are over. And we didn't have to suffer an increase in communist. We're going to be strengthening the government, which will give us even more stability. And once we strengthen the government, we can look into maybe reforming the army. Now... I could extend the Maginot Line. Uh, I could go for defensive or aggressive focus. Or I could spend a moment and just quickly grab these... Um, civilian factories, which probably would be a good idea, but I would really like to get rid of the thing so that I can start to build up my, uh, so that I can start to build up my doctrine. Um, we have aggressive focus versus um, defensive focus. Uh, aggressive focus will give my divisions more attack. Defensive focus will give them more defense. Uh, Leve en masse makes infantry equipment cheaper. This makes motorized cheaper. This makes mechanized cheaper to research. This gives me artillery, heavy tanks, and uh, light and medium tanks. And then the army reform will give me research bonuses for land doctrine and a design company. So I think I think I might go defensive focus here. I think that might be an okay move. Yeah, we really need to get rid of this um, disjointed government as soon as possible because our political power gain is just abysmal. You can see our stability has now reached a point where we are getting a decent boost to our factory output and a decent amount of political power from it. We're also, you know, just means we're, we're generally speaking, we're just, we're doing a little bit better. Okay, so we have strengthened the government. We're going to slowly get more and more stability as time goes on. Um, so we have a lot of choices about how we can approach these next steps. We could go ahead and grab these to expand our civilian economy, but I think I really need to reform my army. And I think for this game, we are going to go down the defensive tree. I think that's a little bit more interesting to try to hold the Germans off is the goal. Okay, still building lots of factories. And we're going to want to start building military factories probably like midway through or like late 1937. We want to start building military factories. But in the early game, we can build a lot of these civilian factories because they um, accelerate our economy. So let's have a look around where the next place we're going to build up some infrastructure. I'm thinking over here in Loire. That is not going to be improved by this. Yeah. That's fine. We'll build up Loire as our next locale. You can see we're slowly building up how many factories we have. Now, some of them are going into being consumer goods, but that's fine. There's dispersed industry. Well, that is going to allow, it's probably going to allow me to build more factories here. Yeah, get another one there. And we'll do a little bit more civilian factories in here. Okay. So we finished the first tech of dispersed industry. So we're going to go ahead and get started on construction. 
We're going to go ahead and get started on dispersed industry, and we're going to go ahead and get started on improved machine tools because we want all of these things to help our industry be able to keep up with the Germans. These are all going to be really, really important um, for our ability to have the infrastructure and weapons we need to actually fight the war. Now, this army is going to be assigned to this theater, and this guy, and then this army is this is assigned here too. Now you should really be in your own theater like that, because you're in North Africa. This is the cavalry thing. Now I wanted that cavalry guy assigned. Okay, that's fine. Let's train a single division of cavalry. We'll deploy this in France. Tell it to go to this order. Oh, right, I need to change you to go back into garrison mode. We don't need to mess around with our fleets just yet. So you guys are garrisoning there. Let's make sure we have you set to go rejoin that order. So we'll just bring this up to an even 24. And I'd like to get four more infantry for here. We probably won't be finished for a very, very long time, but that's okay. We'll let them do their own thing. Okay, there is defensive focus. We're going to do levee en masse. Now, I'm tempted to switch my doctrine from grand battle plan to mass assault and go down the mass mobilization side of the tech tree but we'll kind of we'll kind of have a we'll have a think about that one um but yeah that's it so far for this first introductory episode i hope you guys are enjoying the series so far i have you know more stuff i want to do in this series so please remember to subscribe if you want to see more videos from me remember to leave a like if you want to directly support my channel and remember to leave a comment if you want to give me your feedback other than that i want to say i love you all very much and i'll see you next time Bye bye